don't go for the obvious. You know, don't always go for the, oh, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life, blah, blah. Don't, don't go for that stuff. You try and find some stuff that shows their character, whether that's good, whether it's bad, like show stuff that's them. There are times where we risk it and we're like, oh, is this, you know, too much? Is this whatever? And, and it pays off every time, so, yeah, be bold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Show Love, Episode 5. Uh, my name is Ben. I will be your host, and joining me across the internet uh, from uh, sunny Australia is uh, Sean Tohok from Lemon Tree Filmhouse. Sean, thank you for joining me. Thanks, mate. Good to good to be here. Wicked, man. Um, yeah, so um, basically I got Sean on the show t today um, to talk all about storytelling, really, um, uh, and specifically um, about the couples we film for, um, how to really um, dive deep and get the essence of uh, who our couples are out and onto the screen and, you know, how we can really tell uh, this, their stories Um authentically um you know uh when i found sean's work um it struck me that when i was watching his films i felt like i knew exactly who the couples were um like i've never met these people before in my life but you know two minutes three minutes five minutes into a film i know exactly what they're all about and i thought that was really cool and i thought it'd be great to chat uh to him uh on today's show and hopefully we can all learn something uh from him and how he, how he ma makes his films um yeah so before we kind of get crazy into the main topic um as always on the show um i asked sean to bring along a scene from one of his films for us to have a chat through uh and this one's quite a special one um that has you know been doing the rounds all over the internet and some of you uh, might have heard of it or seen it before um i think i might leave it there and let sean take over it now and sean do you want to tell us a little bit about this film and the story behind it um so i um i was gonna quickly mention my wife as well because she's she's oh, yes. not yeah normally we're we're a bit of a team uh, but because we have kids um we're sort of tagging and out of, of different films but i think with the storytelling approach of it um there's always the two sides of it when it comes down to the to the editing, both the guys and the girls, uh, you know, perspective. So, um, but with with um, yeah, Stefan Robs, we we got presented this, um, I guess, like the holy grail, the ultimate challenge for for a, a videographer to to do, and it's you know making a film for somebody that will never see it, you know, and and. When you look at it like that, you sort of think, oh yeah, you know, you know, makes them sound, makes them whatever. But when the challenges are put in front of you, it's it's really quite hard because you know, you, even the little things, you know, just stealthing around on the day, and you know, normally you just be in the background, but you know, you're constantly reminded, like, hey, I don't know where you are. You know, can you <laughs> please tell me where you are? And this, that, and the other, and and everything just becomes a hundred percent audio. Um, yeah, and, and I, I think when, when you look at the film, we really try and take that power out of your, you know, viewer experience, you know, and, and sometimes seeing things, sometimes not seeing things and, and really try and make sure you experience the whole thing as it is, so. Mm. And... For anyone watching or listening who's starting to get a little bit confused, um, do you want to like um, let them know what was special about, um, you know, Steph in, in, in particular? Okay, so Steph has gone blind maybe six years ago, seven years ago, mm -hmm. um, and she lived next to her now partner, like literally a meter away from him for, for years, but never saw him. She bumped into him in the hallway once, but she was obviously hung over and, and whatever, but um, she n never saw him. With this story, you know, her mum's also blind and, and um, two of her brothers were, are slowly losing their vision as well. And I, I guess we just wanted to tell the story for them and you know um 
yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to hmm. say. No, no, it, it, it's 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 a pretty special and amazing amazing experience to like have someone like that come to you and you know as a creative to sort of start from scratch and go okay how am I gonna you know I've lost like part of my toolbox in terms of you know what I you know use to make what I make how can I still you know make something special for this person um who's not not gonna be able to see it um and it's a good reminder too for videographers that sound is such an integral part of the film experience um and when i guess you're really forced to focus on that um you know it makes for an amazing you know audio experience and a storytelling experience what were some of the things going through your head when you first um when you first were approached and was starting to think about how to tell the story um so we sort of it's sort of a weird um long story we got approached by we we got a phone call from um james day one day and he was he was a, a big photographer over here and he he was pretty much bawling his eyes out and he's like mate i've just been uh watching your films and you know these people i don't know who they are but i just I, the stories you're telling they're incredible um he said i've I've, we're working together in the future with a wedding, but the couple that have booked us have told it, told me that, that you guys are priority over everything. And we were like, what, really, what? You know, and he just said to them, the, the film's important. And, and to me, this is the first time I've been approached, you know, with a prospect like this. So he said, I had to mm. see your work for myself. And he saw it and he was blown away. And he was the one that, that had the initial contact with Steph and he's like, mm -hmm. dude, I've got this story and you guys are the only ones that, you know, will be able to, to do it justice. And yeah, it all sort of went from there. So we just jumped on a plane down to Melbourne and we, we followed pretty much the best part of a year. We followed, followed her around um, because there's things you don't even think about. Like, how do you pick a wedding dress with your mum if both of you are blind? Do you know, and, and we, mm -hmm. we followed through this journey and we, we were just in tears the whole time and... and just a beautiful, beautiful experience. So. Was there any expectation from them that you would be that you would be f filming and recording more than just the wedding itself, or was the, the 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 idea of following the whole process and basically it turning into like a full documentary? Did that come from you, or, or from them, or from James, or? I guess it was from all of us, I think, once we sat down and um, we initially sat down with them and just had, had a couple of beers at their table and had, had mm -hmm. a barbecue with them and, and had, had the microphones recording the whole time um, and just started to hear that story. And the more, more of this story that we heard, we, the, the more we were just wanted to be a, a part of every single piece of it um, mm -hmm. rather than just doing the... the final wedding day part of it because there's more to the story than just the, the day so how i mean you mentioned you were filming for about a year leading up to it like how many sort of filming like you know sessions would you have would you have done uh it was sort of four three no so there's one yeah the the, oh. the wedding dress fitting mm -hmm. um they came up and did some interviews we, we just sat down and did some interviews um which is sort of a, a bit of a retake of the the initial night when we sort of sat down and chat with mm -hmm. them recording um but just with with some footage you know a, a, a bit better recording um but when when it came to the final edit we sort of spliced everything through together um yeah so cool um i reckon now would be a good time for us to um watch a bit of the film we're going to pick out a bit, a bit of the the film the film itself is like what like 19 minutes long oh, <laughs> so no, we're going yeah. to pull out pull out a little section it's a it, also we'll pull out a little section of it but um when you're when you're finished li listening to this go and watch the whole film it's amazing um but yeah we'll watch this now and then we'll come back and we'll chat a little more about it oh this this will be great all right so 10 9 8 7 6 5 Four, three, two, one. 
you know, maybe I'm starting to tear up because that's one thing that, like, I hate about this marriage thing is I really have no idea what it looks like and it's like a blank in its face in my, in my head, like, and that's really frustrating. I love you too. <laughs> Go. Okay. Just do okay. it. Bring it down. Go. And mum was told that she had to have um, this anaesthetic put in her eyes. And I was sitting in the waiting room and she went in and this nurse came bowling out, like fully ran into the reception room, picked up the phone and said, like in the loudest voice ever, I need an urgent brain scan for Linda Agnew. It's okay, it's okay to let your heart raise, heart raise and my books just dropped on the floor. I remember walking into my exam like two hours later and I think I sat there for about 15 minutes and I just walked out. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay just to let your heart raise, heart raise. Two pieces of like metal strips up underneath your eye and they said, yep, you, you've got the condition. And then I gave up for a while. I became really angry and I played the blame game with my mum. I went for a test one day and they said, we can't legally take your licence off you, but we'd prefer it if you handed it in. And I was like, well, that's really hard because that's my whole career. Like, I'm going to hand you my career and I don't know what I'm going to do. was first diagnosed my first thought and it was so selfish but I was like she's not going to get to see me walk down the aisle and that was always my thought and then even when I got diagnosed I always still thought that that was my biggest thing like I was always like my mum's not going to get to see me walk down the aisle never ever did I think that I would be sorry mum don't because you'll make me cry <laughs> I started a bit of a scrapbook when I started losing my sight of what I wanted for my wedding, just in case. And I actually felt Jess got me, to, that was the very first one that I felt. So it when Jess was taking me around feeling dresses, that yeah. was the very first one she took me to to feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I felt it and I was like, oh, that feels so beautiful. Yeah. Cool, alrighty, so um, yeah. Uh, Amazing, amazing film. Make sure you guys go and watch the whole uh, 20 minute long um, clip after this. Uh, it's amazing. But um, hopefully, you know, from that you'll get, get an idea of, um, uh, you know, some of the story involved, which is pretty, pretty powerful. Um, Sean, do you want to give us a little bit of a rundown on um, how you kind of presented the film to the couple? Because I know there was a bit of a you know, it wasn't just a send a link and there you go kind of thing, you know, like, like, like m m most of us do. Yeah, so I think by, at that stage we sort of had been on such a journey together. It didn't feel like, it feel like we were filming people. It, it felt like they were just our friends and, and all this sort of stuff. And we really wanted to, to, to take in that extra mile and, and really just um, deliver it in the best possible way we could. And... Um, so we all flew down to Sydney and we, we basically told them, hey, can you just meet us in Sydney? You know, we want to, I can't remember what we said. Maybe we said we we're going out for dinner or something. I, I'm not sure. Um, and we, we met in, in the city and um, Sony had sort of let us use one of their cinema. They've got like a private cinema screen thing there. And they said, it's all yours for, the, for this experience. And we, we had this really cool little cinema and, and they came in, they had, they'd been sort of waited on um, by some, you know, by some staff and then we sat down and watched the film and, and it just couldn't have gone any better um, because she could still make out blobs of like light, she couldn't see anything but because it was on a, such a big screen rather than like a little computer screen there was like there was an experience, the, the full theatre sound system, um, and she had 
you know, her mum and dad there and her partner Rob as well and um, it was probably one of the most emotional things that I've ever witnessed or been a part of um, to, to be there. And, and then from there we sort of, James had his part as well because he had his own challenges with photography um, where he didn't know what to, how to just deliver photos that nobody's going to see. Um, so he sort of worked together with um, Vision Art, who are an album company, um, and made a complete sort of audio uh, book that, that opened up, had pages, had 3D pictures, had smells, it had um, all sorts of different, different things. Um, and the actual waiters that were there were the guys from Vision Art. They'd flown over from the States to, yeah. to sort of deliver it as a bit of a surprise. So yeah, it was cool. That's so cool, man. Um, what was the kind of, what was the response from Steph and Rob and their family and stuff? About the uh, they were just blown away and, and mm. they were just such genuine, sweet people that they just, they didn't know how to react. And, and I think the biggest shock to them was like, why us? You know, like what, what, what have we done to deserve all of this? And, and um, yeah, I think it was just, it was a time to feel good. You know, we were doing it, doing it for the right reasons. And yeah, yeah that's good. And how long ago was this now? Uh, just at the start of the year. So the wedding was in November. Okay. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. And the actual screening, I think, was the first week of January. It's this, it's this sort of thing that's like, it's such a big and amazing experience. But would you do anything differently in terms of like just creatively or filmmaking wise or any any sort of part of the process that you would do differently next time um i think yeah i think the the big thing is like we we sort of all suggested that um during the actual vows that although the guests blindfold themselves Mm -hmm. um to so that was that was your suggestion yeah yeah and Mm -hmm. um it they all did it and it was the most beautiful thing, but I think it was probably, I would just, I think we're really big on full on surprises. And I think they'd sort of seen the blindfold sitting there and it was, you know, it, it, it was good, but it could have been that extra 10%. And I think, you know, as a, yeah. you know, when you overanalyze things, <laughs> watching back through the footage, you're like, ah, oh, you know, <laughs> so. Yeah. But um, other than that, yeah, I, I think, I think if you look back and question question yourself, you you could always do things ten times better. Um, yeah. But you get stuff thrown at you all the time, don't you? You know, it was, it was raining two minutes before the ceremony, and things were were going all different, you know, yeah. different ways. But yeah. you just that's you know what happens. So yeah, totally um, wicked. Yeah, I mean, again, make sure when you finish this, go and watch the full twenty minute film. It's amazing. You'll cry. It's great. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. So main topic, um, I've labeled this episode painting a picture, which basically I kind of want to basically, yeah, hear from you around how you tell stories of couples, like how you guys figure out who these people are that you've never met and then translate you know, the essence of their personalities on film, because I think it's something you guys do really, really well. Um, so to kind of start off, like, right at the beginning, like, what happens when you get an inquiry land in your inbox? What's going through your guys' heads around, like, you know, how are we going to figure out who these people are? Do we, you know, and, and, and is there a process of figuring out whether those people are going to be the right people to fit with you, or do you kind of just go with who? who you know, anyone who kind of gets in touch and is keen. Um, okay, so we, we've we got quite a, quite a strict system where we've got like a bit of a red flag system. Um, and it's, it's all uh, aimed at trying to put your best foot forward. You know, it's, it's you know, we, we know we're, we're brilliant at telling stories. We know um, that, you know, we, we know we're, we're more than capable of, of doing a good job but we just need those stories. So it all starts with attracting the right, right couples, you know, making sure they're the right fit and making sure that they're comfortable with opening up and, and whatever. Um, but so our website sort of 
designed to make people either love us or hate us. Um, so by the time they sort of inquire, it's already sort of been semi-filtered out. Um, so we don't get so many people saying, hey, just can you send me your prices? You know, the, you know the blanket ones where they send it to 20 people and, you know, whatever. We, we rarely get those, but when we do, that's like a big, you know, because it's, if they can't give us five minutes of their time then, of their time then, you know, you're already knowing you're a sort of a second thought. Yeah. Um, so the aim is that at that stage, people come to us and they're just like, A, we love your films, B, this is us, you know, and usually we get these like, 10 page emails of this story and you're just like, you guys sound freaking awesome. Um, which at that stage, my wife's equally um, full of character and chatty and whatever. And, and it just sort of starts up this, this conversation where people have just opened up um, and we open up back and it's, it's, I feel by gaining some trust, by letting people know who you are, you know, because people, people can't open up to you. And, and I see it, see it across the businesses, mainly photographers. You look on their websites and it'll be like, you, got, you know, you're amazing, you're amazing, amazing. But you try and find out who they are, there's nothing written on there. You know, and, and when, when you're thinking about a wedding day, it's, it's quite a big thing to have somebody, some weirdo next to you, you know, most of the day. And, and you, want, you want them to be comfortable. So, yeah. Hope that answers cool. No, that's that's great. That's that's really interesting because it's like your w website is definitely like I've landed when I first landed on your website itself. I was like, "Whoa, this looks like no other wedding, like videographer, photographer website I've ever seen before." And it's like uniquely you guys. And I think what you're saying about like like people are are either gonna love you and get you and want to go for you, or they're not. And I think that's that would definitely yeah, lead to getting less of those kind of like generic spam kind of emails. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's the aim of it. And that, the aim is that like, uh, there was a stage where we sort of felt like, is this a bit too much us? But the, the, it's, it's worked so well that people feel like they know us by the time they've, they've booked us. Like I, I remember a couple of, about a month ago, I was middle of a photo shoot in the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere. And the bride taps me on the shoulder. What? And, and she's like, I've got a bottle of tequila for you because I know you like tequila. <laughs> and I was like, I do like tequila. And she's like, I know. <laughs> and these, these are the sorts of things that you want is that they, they feel like they know you. And by doing that, they, they, they will in turn open up and be comfortable. Hmm. Wicked, man. And so once you do get those 10 page emails landing in your inbox, you know, what, what's, what's the next step? a dip from there um so i guess we just sort of a a you've always got to agree on the price you know what i mean you've, you've got to make sure you know you, you're not working for free you know you're not doing whatever you, you're still justified um but it's just um sparking a conversation make sure every everything's a, a good fit before you know before every you know before they book in and, and lock in mm. um and at any point at that time if anything sort of gets you know, red flagged, I guess you sort of go, right, well, let's just cut it off. And it is a hard thing. And I'd probably say I'm, I'm like, I lean towards, yeah, let's, just, you know, let's just do it anyway. Let's, let's do it, it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I know a lot of other people will be very similar. Um, but uh, my wife's very good at, you know, being, no, so, no, don't care. We'll hmm. move on. We'll make sure we get a good one. So, and it, it works. So. It's just hard to do. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> no, there's definitely a, a level of discipline involved in that for sure. Um, what, did did it take you guys a while to l like lock into that discipline? Was there a stage of? I mean, I'm sure like in the early stages, you're just taking what like how long did it take you to kind of lock into who your ideal client was? Uh, so we sort of we've been doing this for nine or ten years, and the first yeah. few years we were we were different company, different brand, and we were just taking on anything and everything going, yeah, look how much we're killing it, blah, blah, blah. And then, and it got to a point where like, hang on a second, this isn't what we want. So we sort of st stood back, you know, had a refresh, rethink. Um, and that's where, where we put the, the, the whole thought process into it. And that first year was the hardest because, mm. you know, they're coming in and you, you're 
saying no for no reason. You're like, oh, you know, I really need this work, but you know, you don't tick all the boxes and, and we were quite strict on it. Um, and it paid off now. And, and, and now, now once you sort of get that sort of cycle going, it's, it's great. So, yeah. What's the process for you guys in terms of, um, either before or after you book around like a kind of an initial meeting with the couple, are you like Skyping them? Are you just on email to start with or are you meeting in person? Um, we rarely ever meet people in person. Um, okay. that's just our sort of th thing. I don't know if it's the right thing to mm -hmm. do, but we've got kids at the moment and well, yeah. we're always going to have kids, but yeah, yeah. Like we've, we've, <laughs> yeah. we've got kids and it's, it's really hard to time things and really hard to, to do things. And, and we have been in a few awkward situations where we've met somebody out for like pub for lunch or something like that to, to do it. And you immediately know that they're not quite the right connection you have to sit there for the rest of the meal going oh this is awkward um mm. but like we pretty much just skype everybody now it's it's just a nice easy way that we can all meet and you know be in the comfort of our own homes and yep. you know fit the right timing so mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's the right thing or not but it, yeah. it almost gives you that freedom to um chat for as long as you need to chat yeah. i guess cool um, yeah and are you guys like um doing like you know like in-depth interviews from the get-go or are you, is that coming later on in the process uh what kind of in-depth interviews like like in terms of like figuring out like like who these couples are and what their story is and like how you kind of like you know not really it it. not really uh, i don't we just we just try and get some trust going. And, and I think that's mm -hmm. probably the key to the whole thing is if you can earn their trust, they will let you do every, anything you want. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Like, it's not like we sit down and go, oh, have you, you know, what's your story? What's this? What's that? It mm -hmm. all comes out in, in chatting, you know, like when, when we Skype people, you know, the, the first questions will always be, how do you meet? How do you do this? How do you do that? And, you know, sometimes you're like, hey, that's a really cool story. You should, you know, speak out on yeah. or whatever. Like, but, yeah, yeah. you know, or other times you might do whatever, but it's not, it's, it's not like we're quizzing them, you know, to, to mm -hmm. force something out of them. Um, I would say that the, in that sense, the bigger challenge is on the, the end half is trying to get right. Mm. What was, what was their story? Yeah. So, okay. So if you don't have like a kind of, um, you know, hard and fast, like set of questions and stuff, how are you then, um, I guess, yeah, like you said, down the end, like guaranteeing you're going to have a story to work with or knowing what the story's going to be. Are you guys just going to like trust yourself or do you have a bit of a, a sort of plan B in place around if it doesn't obviously fall into place? Um, I would say most of them fall into place anyway, but there are the odd one that, that just doesn't, you know, like you might get to the end of the day and you're like, oh, you know, you, you, you know this couple, you've spoken to this couple, you know the stories, but on the day they haven't physically verbalized mm -hmm. what you want them to say. And, and, you know, they are tough ones where you walk away and you're like, oh, I had, you know, whatever. But I just, I feel... I don't know if it's just us or, or if everyone thinks this, I just, I feel like the wedding day shouldn't be too forced. Um, quite often we'll remind couples and say, I know you like our films, I know we're this or whatever, but at the end of the day, we're just there to capture what happens. You know, we'll do it the best way we can, we'll, we'll capture everything you know, in, in the best way. But by being honest with them at that stage, you know, it allows them to realize that a lot of it's on them mm -hmm. rather than on us. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, totally. And even if there's nothing like obvious that they're, that they can like, cause I've had couples who like, um, go like, this is what we're all about. You know, this is like our story. Then I, then I have other couples who were like, I don't know, we're just us and we don't really know, like, our story yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, so I guess I guess mm. through this whole thing you have to be adaptable and, and when presented with situations like that you would, you know, naturally, the ones that is like, oh, I'm not quite sure, you just, you mm. know, without quizzing them, you'd just be yeah. keep chatting to them, find out these things and, and somewhere there's a story and it might not be necessarily them narrating the story, it might be their best mate or, you know, it might be a few different things and I think that's where you have to be flexible um, mm -hmm. and... I, th I think that's where our style, what we're trying to achieve is make each film unique and different to each couple. And by not, have, not, by not trying to force, say, like a template or force like what you've got in your head for what a film should be, then mm -hmm. you sort of give, give a bit more freedom to those sorts of things. And, and it, when presented with that, you'd be like, okay, well, you know, this this isn't the story, you know, and I'd say 50% of the couples, you know, quite often the, the, the grooms, super shy, super shy, can't, you know, mm. can't structure a sentence very well. Um, mm. And, you know, maybe the, maybe the bride's booked us more so than he has, but it's all on him to, to speak it, yeah. you know, verbalize it. Um, and that, that is the challenge and it's still a challenge, to, you know, today, but it's um, just, you just have to just be real, chat to them, and, and and try and make them feel comfortable, and maybe point out some things that they may not have thought about. You know, people have you know they're only usually get married once and don't know what to to do, and and I'd say a common line we always get is, "Hey, you know." we want to s skip over all the formalities and we just want to go straight to the dancing, straight to the party. You're like, there are other things to make a party, you know? <laughs> you know, so it's just helping them, I guess. So. Hmm. Do you, are you sort of like um, having any part in the day in terms of like ensuring there's going to be the right like content of audio if you kind of get get what i'm saying in terms of like are you suggesting to the couples um that they and their family include certain types of things in their speeches and stuff because like i know from like when i like will shoot a wedding like sometimes the content of the speeches and the vows and stuff is great and it's got all the story elements to you know tell us who these couples like who, who, who this couple is and what they're all all about but then other weddings, people don't put that in their speeches or their vows. And if, you know, the, 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 the best man's pulled the best man speech off Google and, and they've got kind of more traditional, not, 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 non personal vows. Like how are you, are you just kind of like, does that come down to, you know, way back in the early process where you're picking the right sorts of couples or are you, kind of making sure you're ticking a box in terms of like um, letting the couples know to sort of say what they need to say on the day. So it's, it's, it's all a little bit of everything. So it's, you know, A, attracting the right people, B, you know, booking the right people, C, you know, it's, it works all the way down. And at this stage, you know, as I was saying before, you, you've, you've earned some trust, you, you've, you've be brought, like started this friendship, you know, like TJ, her, she's, like her biggest battle is her emails. It's not like she can just reply to somebody like and just say, hey, all good. You know, she's got to do like a 10 page email because they've done a 10 page email. It's like blah, 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 blah. And at this stage, it's already got everyone talking, you know, and, and if the guy's shy, you might be able to say, why can't the bride do a speech? Mm. You know, you know, it's just, it's just throwing a few questions out there. I, I find there's, there's more, you'll have more luck letting them question something than dictating something to them. Yeah. Have you ever like had, had to do a plan B where it's like, that's like you do as much as you can, but then it still doesn't work out on the day. Have you ever done anything where you're like re-recording stuff after interviewing after, you know, is there any, 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 any time it hasn't worked? No. Nah. Like I know videographers that have had to do that, you know, just bad audio quality um, or they haven't got things, but it's, it's, 
was trying to say this before, it's, it's, there's a big, I feel like your job is just to, ca to capture what happened on the day and the second you have to bring in these other elements, it sort of takes away from that. So yeah, you can do it and every, everyone's style is different. So do, do what's right for you, but I guess for our, our style, it's trying to, trying to incorporate what happens then and there. You know, we don't do like sit down interviews, some people lock people in the room for things like that. Um, they're all good, you know, but it's, I guess, not what, what we're after. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I think, I think it's also, I, I know our job is to do that anyway, but making sure that you've got everything right the first time you know what i mean you're not coming flying into to a ceremony two minutes before it starts and just like oh let's throw mics everywhere and and whatever it, it's it's about having a good sort of plan a good backup you've sort of spaced out the day enough so everyone's got time to actually have moments and actually have chats and not you know you because as a photographer you can do things run things a bit tighter but as a videographer mm -hmm. it's it's quite it's quite hard and quite often you 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 know in the, in the background and and whatever, but so maybe eight years ago or something, I did some contract work for some other companies, just shooting for them. I was like, oh, this is cool, mm -hmm. easy money and whatever. But I got to see the other side of the story when you really just don't know the couple at all. You know, you're rocking up mm -hmm. on the day and you're like, are you the groom? Are you the groom? Are you, you know, you, you just got mm. zero whatever and they just want to film. They don't care who you are, what's going on. And by seeing that, and seeing how you get treated on the day and you know the photographer's like ah it's just him it's just the videographer you know you just mm. like you're an afterthought of everything and mm. and by befriending him earlier on by gaining trust all these sorts of things you notice a difference in in, in, in these tricky situations you'll always get a look and they'll be like everything okay and you're like everything's cool you know it's like it's just this extra sort of power extra bit of mm. Um, game. I don't know if I'd answer Trust, question, yeah. but... Yeah, <laughs> totally. No, for sure. Um, before, bef before we leave the kind of the filming of the day and stuff, um, I would just love to touch just technically on um, uh, how you record audio on the day because, you know, it's, it is something that is that for most videographers, it's the aspect of recording and wedding day that people think about least and and put effort into least and and, and upskill last um so you know what sort of in terms of gear and techniques are you guys um doing to get good audio content from a wedding so i think when you when you think of like audio, audio is hmm. when you know people say it's like fifty percent of the film. So when you think of it like that, you can have you can have great you know footage, but if you've got shit audio, you know it's it's always going to bring down that footage. Whereas if you've got the reverse, you've got great audio and your footage is rubbish. You know it's that's that's the difference. So don't think of it as an afterthought. You know, th think of it as a main priority hmm. and. Um, have the conversations early, chat to the celebrant early, email them or, or, or whatever so there's no surprises on the day. Um, and, you know, maybe stress to the couple that, that that's the, the hardest part of the job as well. Um, so they're not just so blasé about it. You just say, you know, look, look, the footage is easy, but this stuff, I, I need your help. I need some pre-thought. I need some whatever. Um, just because people are drunk, they're emotional, they're whatever, you, you know, it's like the mics are flying mm. around left, right and center. Yeah, like, yeah. So, um, but as for audio, as technical, I've, I've literally got everything. I've got wireless mics, I've got dictaphones, I've got, you know, field recorders, I've got basically a whole kit of everything. So on the day, whatever they get thrown at you, you know, you, you, you've got mm. every single option. You, you just want to not be in the situation where you haven't got an option. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like if a celebrant's like, oh, I didn't, didn't wear a belt. Oh, I've got one, you know, you know, I didn't do this. Oh, I've got one. It's just, you just want to be, you know, the easy person to work with um, because nobody hears what you're hearing. 
you know, like you're putting the mic on the celebrant, like, yeah, this is really important, but they don't hear it. They don't hear like their dangly earrings banging on the mic and all this mm. sorts of stuff. Like you've, you've, um, so yeah, one more question about audio on the day is, um, do you mic the bride? Because I've, it's, I've seen a lot of things online recently about miking brides and I'm dubious about the upsides of it, if it's worth it. I think audio quality wise, it's always going to be better, but you're going to, you risk putting, making yourself really aware or present or even a bit um, gropey or, or whatever, you know, because it's, it's not an easy process to mic up a bride. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've heard of people sort of pre having the, everything in there, but it's still awkward and, and people are aware that there's a mic there. So just try and, um, I mean, it's, it, if it's up to you, you know, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. I, I know in the States, a lot of people do it cause it's quite common. Um, but mm. like, I mean, I've got a white, a, a white microphone. So if I, if I need to mic someone up, I will, but, um, I, I will, it will be like my last, last resort before, before anything, just because, yeah. you know, it's their day, their day. And they just want to be present in the day and overall you'll get better footage, better audio, better everything. The more they forget yeah, that you're there. Totally. And I think one more bit of kit I want to ask to see if you use, because again, it's kind of a trendy American thing is do you bring a mic stand with you? I do. You yeah. do. I I think I'm gonna s s start doing that. Do you? Has it helped with the uh, the wandering men? Because it's it's always it's always the men who yeah. wander. Yeah. So I and this is what I was sort of getting at. It's like I've got quite a big, um, like our we've got a lot of stuff to carry around with us, but we don't always use it all. And one of those things is a mic stand because you know you get thrown all sorts of different things, and sometimes it's nice to be like clink job done stop people wandering mm. around um and yeah. like more importantly the, the days where i am shooting by myself if that main camera is locked off i can be getting other shots and doing other things rather than like chasing somebody that's drunk and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Throwing it. i don't need a microphone yeah, yeah. i can project yeah. my voice exactly yeah 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 cool man all right well i think let's um let's leave the filming and the day you know there for now and let's start to talk about editing um you know you've got the footage you come back um what's the process for you around sd card to starting to you know build this story um probably up until the editing is probably the same as everyone else so just back everything up as many times as many places as you can i've got <laughs> nas drives and and all sorts trying to make sure that there's no whatever. But one thing that I don't know if, if it's normal or if everyone does is when we back up the cards, we always back it up from that point to two separate drives rather than just doing one and then duplicating it just in case there's one gets mm. corrupt on the way and then you're like essentially duplicating that corrupt file. And it has saved me mm. a, you know, a few occasions where you're like, where is this file? And you're like, oh, lucky. So good little yeah good little tip um and then yeah yeah i guess through the editing um i'll just go back through just edit edit the ceremony and speeches and you know try and refresh fresh you know what happened on the day and and hear what sort of happened and, and i think it's just about building the story then build the story before you look at the footage before you do anything else because that is the film do you know what i mean and then and you, once, you've, once you've got your sort of story, your words laid out, you, you know, the music comes, comes in at that, that point. And then the last, like literally the last thing we do is put, put the, the footage in or, the, or the, even so much the photo shoot footage. It's, it's all um, mm. just making sure the story is strong by itself. Yeah. Do you have, like, does it come easy in terms of like getting to know the couple beforehand like when you sit down do you kind of already know in your head like what it's all going to relatively flow like or is there a bit of a kind of figuring out process figuring out i'd say it's probably like the the longest part um trying to figure out what words and 
uh, what order and what music. Um, as soon as it gets to the footage stage, that's super quick. Um, but yeah, I think it's... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Really? Because, <laughs> like, one of the things I, I sort of, like, noticed with your films in particular, it was basically, it's something around the idea of, like, the way you present information. So there's a way you present information about the couple in an order that it like reveals a little bit about them more and more it's like it's like their personality just kind of like slowly gets revealed as the film goes on is that like a conscious process or is that just kind of a subconscious like way you work or yeah so um, um the big the big overriding factor is that i never we like we never want to get into like a template style thing and and very often like I've, I've, mm -hmm. we've built something and we've sat down together at the end and we're like whoa no this is you know the same layout as the last film or the same as this and then we'll go back and like remix it up and whatever but overall you need you need something that's you know most people watch your film you know they'll give it five seconds ten seconds you know you, you need you need an initial grab and then after that you need to keep them interested enough to watch to the end because if you watch all these stats and you watch all these other films and whatever, it's literally dive straight out, you know. And, yeah. and you, you need yeah. need to keep people invested in the story because we, as humans, have zero <laughs> time for anything. They say, yeah. yeah. And are you like? I mean, I I, I realize you kind of approach each sort of film separately, but like, is there any kind of like uh aspect of like balancing out um who's getting shown in the the film because i know i've i've had that sort of from couples where i'll like craft this whole story um but it's it's because the like sort of like one of the groomsmen had a really good speech that had a big you know juicy part of story that i was using but the couple are like cool but can you use like you know the father of the bride speech and the you know maid of honor speech because they're more important to us like as people um you know are you guys do you guys find that where it's like you have to sort of balance out whose audio is getting used um in the film and where yeah so um where possible like yes i, I do agree there's very often times where there's one person that just could be the whole film and you know, you, you sort of have to like wind them back a little bit. Um, but ideally you'd tick somebody off every, every list. I, I think the only time we've sort of ever had somebody mention it is when you've got everybody but one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're just doing one or two people or three people, you know, you sort of get away with it sometimes. Um, but if you've sort of like left out the dad for some reason, they're going to be like, well, mm. what was wrong with him you know so um yeah yeah there is an element of, of trying to balance balance it out and, and likewise with the footage as well you want to you want to show everybody um mm. throughout the day having fun and doing stuff so sweet and then when it comes to music are you do you guys have like again it's kind of like how much is your brand versus um trying to make it unique for the couple like when you're thinking about music is it your preference or are you dialing into what the, you know, what the couple's like in terms of their music taste? Um, so yeah, we'll factor in what the, the couple semi like just from what you hear on the day and what you think they sort of like mm. or what type of their wedding was. Um, but I think the overriding factor is, is what their speeches are. You know, if, if you think they're, they've yeah. got like a soppy, you know, taste for, for whatever, mm -hmm. but they're, things all humorous you know you, you want to what you know adjust accordingly yeah, work with what you've got yeah so um yeah. and hmm. yeah um i i think another another thing we probably never do is we, we probably rarely ever maybe in the early early days but these days i never look at any other body's film like anyone else's films um mm -hmm. purely because you can't help but learn something or change something or, or whatever and i, I feel like you're not ever going to get 
like there's only so far you can go with copying people. Do you know what I mean? And if you keep copying people, mm -hmm. it's all going to be down to price. And yeah. if you really want to make a, a good name for yourself or you really want to make a, a um, I guess, have some power to, to charge what you want or to whatever, it's, it's all about trying to be unique and consistent to, to yourself. So try and find, you know, who's around you and go, right, well, they're all nailing that. They're all covering that. What can I do? Um, and sometimes it works in your favor. I've, I've got mates here that, that they shoot probably not, not necessarily their style, but they they can smash them out really quickly and charge lots of money. And they're like, wait, I'm winning. <laughs> so it's, it's mm. cool. Yeah. And, um, I guess sort of, sort of, sort of finish off the whole sort of experience in terms of like, you, you know, you, you filmed it, you've edited it, you know, you've, you've got the film as close to, um, you know, who you think these cut, these people are, what's the kind of first reaction that you often get when you show couples like first drafts? So we made a decision years ago not to offer drafts. So we literally yeah. give them the film and that's it. It's just, um, yeah, yeah. that's not to say we wouldn't change things if people asked mm -hmm. it, but we just, we feel like if you hand somebody, like if somebody handed you a pizza and said, tell me what's wrong with this. Yeah. You, you're looking at it from the wrong eyes. Do you know what I mean? So we, mm -hmm. we, we spend that extra bit of time at the end and we go back and forth between each other. I'll, I'll, you know, edit it to whatever I want, give it to TJ, she'll go through it and she'll rip it to shreds and send it back to me and, and vice versa. But the aim is to make sure it's 100% perfect in our eyes to give to them. And it's worked 99% of the time. I'd say in the last five years, we've had maybe two or three come back. And like, yeah. and they're, they're, like the changes are tiny things like, hey, does yeah. my dad you know, get a chance to say yeah. something? And you're like, shit. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's like, yeah. um, so that is the aim. Um, just purely to, to look at it. And, 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 you know, you always sell it to them and say, hey, you know, make sure you sit down with some wine. You, sit, you know, enjoy the, enjoy the day and, and you know. Yeah. So. Are, you still, are, you still, are you sending a digital link or is there a bit more of a sort of... Um, yeah, yeah. You know, um, experience involved in that first few. Yeah, we're sort of in between at the moment. Like, we we were probably one of the last people that hung on to like DVDs and Blu-rays because we were like, yeah, you know, they'll get home, they'll stick it in there, it'll be a thing. Yeah. Um, it'd be a thing, yeah. And it was, and it just, you know, what they were like, they're clunky and take forever to do, and you know, so we we got rid of that. The USBs are they're they're, they're still our main thing, um, but yeah, I'd probably say in the last month or two we've we've we have sent a few that are like straight away to you know online just to make mm -hmm. it easy purely because some of these couples were from Europe or from somewhere overseas and you're like yeah get it to you now <laughs> yeah um, and it's worked yeah. out well so yeah cool man awesome all right well sort of to start to wrap, wrap us up now um, I guess do you have any kind of general other advice for people who are wanting to you know inject more of their couple's personality into their films um I guess let's have a think about this one. Don't go for the obvious. You know, don't always go for the oh, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life. Blah blah. Don't don't go for that stuff. You try and find some stuff that shows their character, whether that's good, whether that's bad. Like show stuff that's them, that's got some meaning, got some stuff because. Um, there are times where we risk it and we're like, oh, is this, you know, too much? Is this whatever? And, and it pays off every time. So, yeah, be bold. <laughs> Sweet, man. Good advice. Fantastic. All right, last question. What's next for you guys? What's next for Lemon Tree Films? <laughs> you know, are you, are you steady on course or is, is there big changes coming? Or uh, I I think there's always changes coming. I, I think right now we're sort of in damage control with kids, just trying to like keep our heads like not above water, but like with kids, you know, you're trying to, there's like a balance of work versus kids and, and you're just trying to make that work for you. Because I think when we first started, it was like, oh, we'd have so much time for the kids. And now that they're here, you're like, oh, 
All right. <laughs> got amount of editing today. Um, yeah. But yeah, we've got we've got a lot of ideas on the. They're probably just on the back burner at the moment, but not too much further. I think we'll be good. We're good. Wicked. Fantastic. All right, man. Um, thank you so much for all your insight on that. Um, I actually I learned a whole lot, and I'm I'm excited for the coming season to start to. Because it's. It's something I, that got me hooked on wedding films when I first started was like really getting to know couples and not that it slipped entirely away, but it was nice to get a good refresher on like, I guess, building that trust with, with people and really like, like letting them know who you are and they'll let, you know, you know who they are and um, yeah, it was wicked. So th- thank you. Um, before we, before we stop the episode, I want to sort of go, um, outside wedding films for a bit and just talk about something. Can I, before you go somewhere else, I've just had a, had a quick, quick thought. Um, Go for it. Go for it. I just got a quick tip. I've, 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 and you guys probably see it all the time as well, but like any, anytime Mm. I'm filming somewhere, it's always like stories of bad videographers and bad photographers and bad whatever, like be good to each other. That's like, you will get so many bookings, so many, like such a good name for yourself and such, you know, just simple respect from from everyone, but just be nice to everyone. It's a stressful situation and and whatever, but like, you know, going back on that thing about, you know, earning some trust with the couples, if you earn trust with photographers as well, Mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it's making everything work, work perfectly. So, yeah. Absolutely. Photographers are your friend. Vendors are your friend. Just the industry is way too small for any kind of, you know, beef with that. No, for sure. Cool. Fantastic. All right. Let's leave weddings. Let's, you know, because we don't just sit around thinking about weddings all, all day. What are you watching at the moment or, you know, what games are you playing or, you know, what are you What's getting you inspired at the minute outside of wedding films? Um, uh, so pretty much anything that's on Netflix that that's good. Like we we we're pretty bad for um for just binge watching something. Like I think Be- Peaky Blinders. Are you out, are you? Oh yeah, I was gonna say are you like a drama show or a, or a doco? Because I feel like there's two types of Netflix watches. Drama. Is like drama for sure. The Peaky Blinders drama. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Nice. But the problem is, um, um, I've been working away quite a bit recently, and every time I go away, it's like, oh, my wife's like, oh, I've sort of uh, shot. <laughs> I've, I've sort of watched yeah. the rest of it. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all good. Um, I mean, because I, I tend to be quite sort of addicted to the whole, like, um, doco, you know, end of Netflix, um, which is a lot easier to, like, pinch, like, techniques and stuff from in terms of taking things back over into like wedding films because wedding films is basically like a documentary but are you finding that like you're trying to take any kind of more traditional cinematic style techniques from like more high-end drama shows and put them into your work um not really i find we used to be like super cinematic like with our shots and we've sort of reeled it back in a bit mm-hmm. and we've just got like a general motto, I don't know, like a, a general way of working. And it's always, we will put a shot in if it holds meaning to the couple over whether it's a good shot. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? And, and we, yeah, yeah. we are very aware when we post something that, you know, we could have put our version, you know, like our killer shot in, but mm we know when we give it to the couple, they're like, oh my God, they nailed that shot of such and such of whatever was happening. And, and yeah, sorry, I brought it back to weddings again. <laughs> no, no, that's good enough. Cause the, 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 the point of this section is to like kind of figure out is like, if there's any like inspiration, cause like how you mentioned, you don't watch other people's wedding films yeah. to get inspiration from. Um, but we like subconsciously take inspiration from, Oh you know, yeah, of course. Anything we watch or do, or so, um, yeah. Is there any kind of like other techniques that you've seen, like I don't know, in like music videos or anything that you sort of like, or like you know, like ads or anything that you're like, oh, yeah, I'd really love to like put that into my 
into my work. Yeah. Or or, or, or are you kind of against that and, and wanting to keep, you know, stop the kind of... No, but like I, I have um, been aware yeah. probably the last few weeks in particular that I'm really watching a film but almost admiring the way they've composed a shot. You know, they may have like a mm-hmm. shot of, you know, you for example, but they've got a lot of like empty space behind it because they're trying to imply certain things and like it sort of yeah. drags me back out of the story. I'm like, they're doing it so well, but I'm so aware of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's so. the curse of, you know, filmmaker. You, you're suddenly, you, you suddenly can't just sit and watch something. You're always aware of yeah, the framing or the, you know, whatever they're doing. But yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's sort of the hard thing with, with what we do is you, you have to, you have to make money at some point. You know, we, mm. we are good at, you know, all of us are good at something in particular. It might be the filming, might be the editing, might be, you know, because to me, I would say my edit, the editing's the strong point over the filming. But it's, it's mm. you have to still always weigh up is, you know, are you get, making the right money? Is it like, it, it, we've, we've, we're quite an all rounder category, really, as a, mm. as a, you know, industry. And I, I do see it a lot. I see people that are, incredibly talented but they're just not great at running a business or, or vice versa and you know and it's um yeah something i think we could all practice on or learn or or try and brush our skills up on so yeah absolutely cool fantastic all right well i think we'll we'll leave it there yep. for the, the this episode um thank you again for co- c- coming on the show Great to meet you. Yeah, you too, mate. And um, where can people find your your work online? Yeah, uh, just on, wanna, on our you know, Facebook your stuff. Facebook page um, or our website, so lemontreefilmhouse.com. Fantastic. All right, I'll I'll put all the um, links to uh, Sean and TJ's work below. Um, yeah, if you guys uh, want to watch more of the work, make sure to go and watch the full um, full uh, s- version of St- St- Stephen Rob's film, which I'll have linked below as well. Um, because that is amazing and um, yeah thanks again for coming on and we'll see you guys next time cool thanks guys thank you